okay part three and uh, we are going to be adding some basic attacks so let's just have a little look where we got to we'd added a, a functional camera that will move around the character um, we also added some animations and we set up our basic animation blend space and such uh, there's a few things we've got to fix though just straight off the bat um, the feet are in the ground so that's the first thing i want to fix so i'm going to open up the player and i'm just going to raise her up a little bit like that and hit compile see how that looks looks better okay, good so that's one thing fixed and then i wanted to go in and do the sword so um just open up your stuff here and then i just wanted to tilt the sword a little bit like that i think that should do so hit save and hit play yeah, it looks way better. Okay, and that's another thing. It's always best to go and... Um, it's always best to go... If you've got a problem with the weapon position, it's always best to go fix it here rather than try and doing it here. Um, so just keep that in mind. You can, you can if you're in a bit of a bind, to you know, in a, in a rush, do it here. But it's always best to set it up properly here. Uh, right, so setting up an attack. So there are multiple ways to do this. Um, and I'm going to try and show you a bunch of different ones. All right, so let's let's try the simplest way. So we just want this to play an attack animation. It's just as simple as that. When we hit a button, play an attack animation. So let's um, go to the player BP and uh, go to the event graph. Now... We need to set up a button prompt for this. So go into the settings menu here and then go to the project settings and let's set up a button prompt. So uh, this, there's a lot in here, but we're not going to touch most of it. We're going to just come down to where it says inputs, click on that. And then here we want to click on this little arrow here to open up another action map in. Now we can see we've already got a jump and this reset VR will just leave that. Um, but if I click on this plus here, I can add one and I'm just going to call this tack. And then underneath I can set what button it'll be uh, assigned to. So right now it's none. So if I click on the drop down menu and go, no, not keyboard, actually mouse. And I'm going to put it on the left mouse button. There we go. So if it um, if I ever press left, left mouse button, it will call uh, this event. All right, so close that. And then open up our player again. And then right-click and then type attack. And then we'll see we've got that action event. Okay, so it has pressed and released. So when we press it, we can do something. When we release the button, we can do something. Um, so for now... We just want to drag in our mesh and then drag out of the blue pin and type play animation. Remember, this is the most simple way to do things. This is probably not the way to do it, but, you know, it's, it's good to know this. And if you just type in or find your tack, which is, hmm, what was it called? Uh, so this one, sword and shield slash. Okay, compile. So should be as simple as that, right? We press the button, and it does it. Now you'll see there are some problems in that we can move while we're doing it, and we've got slidey legs. And also, if we keep pressing it, it's just going to go back. So that's going to, you know, that's that's a problem. But if you've got an NPC or something like that and they just need to play an animation and that's it, this could be the method for you, right? So there are, you know, there are simple ways of doing things that, you know, for characters and stuff, this is definitely not the right way. But I just wanted to show you that uh, that is one way of doing it. Now, there, are, there would be ways of going in there as well and making this work. So you could just do uh, go and do uh, do once. Okay, and then have a delay that's the same amount of time as the animation. So if we go in there and go to animation 
and find which one it is. Uh, this one, I think. And it's it's 1.5 seconds. Sorry, if you can't, if you don't, I'm going a little fast, right? So you can see where the uh, animation the animation length down here. So if you hit pause, you can see where the uh, animation ends, and it's 1.5 seconds exactly for this one. So that if we go back here, set that delay to be 1.5, and then once that's completed, restart, uh, reset the do once, and hit compile. That, as far as I know, just off the top of my head, yeah. So that fixes that problem where you can't spaff the button anymore. Okay? So, you know, there are ways of making it work. But let's go and do it the proper way, right? So that would be one method. But that's not the way I recommend doing it. But sometimes it's, it's good to understand uh, you, the options that you've got. So let's get rid of that. And instead of doing that, let's create a variable called attacking question mark and we'll leave it as a boolean a boolean is a yes or a no uh, question so it's always good to phrase them as questions um next we what am i doing right yeah attacks so we want the uh attack event back again but when we press this button we want to set this variable to be true Okay, and then like we did before, we want a delay, which is the uh, length of the animation, which we know is 1.5. And then we're going to set this variable to be false. Okay, and uh, we might need to come back and do some more with this, but for now, we can just leave that like that. We'll uh, drag a box over it, hit C, and call this attacking. Later on, we'll set up combos, but for today, we're just going to set up a basic uh, attack. So um, then we want to open up the actual player animation blueprint. Okay, so if you don't have that open, that's in player animation, if you've been following along in the same anyway, and then it's in there, this player and in BP. Okay, so again, you might not navigate to this screen. You might be in this screen or this screen or even... Uh, or even this screen, okay? So you can navigate to all the different screens here, all the different graphs, and, uh, and but also up here as well. So there's multiple ways to navigate. We want to be in the event graph, for starters. Uh, now, I'm just going to go to player BP and make sure I've compiled, because if I haven't com compiled, I won't be able to get access to this variable. Or I will be able to get access, but it'll cause problems. It'll uh, cause errors. So with that compiled... I'm going to drag out here, and I'm going to type. So drag out from as player BP, and I'm going to type um, get attacking. Okay, and then I'm going to drag out and promote that to a variable. This variable is going to be called attack. Now you can't call it the same thing because there can't be two variables called the same thing. So just um, abbreviate it or, or something like that or change the word <clears throat> so we've got that set up in our um in our update for the animation <clears throat> but now we need to go and actually set up a transition for it okay so for, we only want this to happen from here from this well we don't, we can only have it happen from here so we drag out an arrow let go and add a state and we'll call this state attack and then we'll double click to open it up. And then we need the asset browser. So we'll open up the asset browser and we'll drag in the sword slash. Okay. And that'll play the animation. Um, but we need to set up transitional rules now. Okay. So we need the, um, the computer needs to know. Sorry, just go back to locomotion when this should happen. And we're going to do this inside these little circles here. But we, so what these arrows mean is that they can transition from this into this, but we also need to be able to transition back from attack into the idle walk run. So we'll drag out. Now let's set up these transitional rules. This is really easy. So we'll click on this first one. So what is the rule that dictates whether we transition from this idle walk run to the attack? Well, that is this. Is attacking true, right? So we've got the attack variable here. Oh, sorry, not don't drag it in there, but click on there. 
the um, the first one, the one that's going to attack, and then drag in your attack variable. Get, drag out, and type equal boolean. And is it equal to true? If it's equal to true, then enter the transition. All right, so guess what? For the reverse of that, oh, getting lost. For the reverse of that, we want the opposite to be true. So transitioning back from attack to idle walk run, drag in attack, get, type equal boolean, and this time leave it false. Hit compile. <coughs> okay. And that should be set up. We're not getting any errors. Hit play. Right. So now you'll see we don't have any of the problems we had before with the uh, uh, with being able to press the button multiple times because we've got that delay. Uh, there is a little bit of a jitter at the end of the animation, which generally means that your delay is a little too long. Uh, so the way to fix that would be to go into the player BP and just make that maybe 1.3. Yeah, and that transition then will be a little better. Now we've still got slidey legs. Okay, so this next part or is a decision on what kind of combat games that you want, right? So you can diverge a little bit here. You can make a combat game where you can walk and run, uh, walk, run, and attack, or you can make a combat game more like, say, Dark Souls, where you press the attack button, it commits you to that animation, and you've got to wait till that animation's over before you can move or literally do anything again. You can put cancels into that and all sorts of things, but that's the basic gist. So the first way would be to do it the Dark Souls way, where you're locked into the animation. I'll show you how to do that first. So we'll open up the um, enemy blueprint, uh, sorry, the player's blueprint, and we'll go into the attacking code. Let's just have a quick look how long we got. Okay, not long. So we'll go into the attacking code, and we in here we need to um, we need to do we need to limit the movement, right? So once you press the button and attacking is set to be true, we want to uh, maybe we have to actually drag in the character movement and drag out from that and type. <coughs> Um, stop movement immediately. Okay, so that should stop all movement. <coughs> right? And then once we're done, so let's just try that, right? Does that stop movement? No. Um, we could disable inputs, but I, I don't want to do that because then you can't... Hmm. Can I just disable movement? Disable movement. Yeah, there we go. That's what I want. So we've disabled the movement. Hit compile, give that a quick test. Yeah, so now we can't move. And we can't move afterwards either because we haven't set it to you know, enable movement. And it isn't that. You would think there would be uh, enable movement. But actually, what you do is after we've set the variable to be false, we drag out and we type set movement mode, the character movement, and we set it to walking. And that way we can set it back to what it was before, to default. So let's try that. So this should completely lock the rotation you were in and everything as soon as you press the button. Okay, as soon as you press the button, you're locked. You cannot move. But as soon as that's over, you can. So that is how a lot of games work. Like I say, the Souls games tend to work like that, but in conjunction with root motion, so that you are actually getting some movement. Um, that's, that's a completely different system that uh, hopefully we'll get around to talking about and even making an example of. Right, so quickly then, I'm going to do the other method. So uh, the other method would be so that we can uh, walk and run and swing at the same time. So let's just go into the player BP and undo this. So I'll just move that up there because I haven't decided which system I'm going to do yet. And hit compile. And then we need to go into the animation blueprint. All right. And we need to go into the attack um, block. I don't know what they call that just yet at the moment. So open that up. And then disconnect these by holding down Alt and then clicking 
uh, on the little dude. And then drag in this player BS. And then uh, this is going to be you. So we're going to do a blend space per bone. So drag out from here and type blend per bone. And it's a layered blend per bone. Okay, So it's going to layer in the animations depending on which bone we select. Okay, that makes sense in a minute when we open this up and have a look. <clears throat> so the base pose is going to be our blend space, so the walking and the idling and everything. And it needs its speed variable plugging in, but we can just drag that in. Um, and then the secondary pose is going to be this attack. So we, we put that into the blend pose there. Now you can do multiple. You can add and you can do loads of little blends, and that's how the AAA... Uh, people do all their amazing animations by just layering uh, loads of animations on top of each other. Um, and then this wants to go into the outpose. Okay, so click on this layered blend per bone, and then we're going to do uh, select loads of stuff here. So click on this arrow, then click on the arrow below, then click on this plus, then click on this arrow, and then we finally get to where we want to be. And this is where we put in the bone name that we're going to blend from. So if I go back to my player skeleton, and then get rid of uh, that animation because I don't want that anymore. Go back to default pose. Now, if you can't find this, it's in your... So go to content, player, mesh, and then it's there, the player skeleton. Just open that up then. Okay, and we want to just select there, and it's called spine with a capital S. Now, if you're using a different model, you must go check this because you have to write in exactly how it's spelled. So spine with a capital S. So I'm going to type that there. Spine with a capital S. Blend depth, I'm going to set to 3. Uh, and mesh, mesh, mesh base rotation. I'm going to leave unticked, but sometimes I do tick that because you get better blend. Um, but you just play around with this uh, to see what results you like. Hit compile. Now we can even test this here. So again, we've got this attack variable available to us. So we can move this up to high speed. And if we click this to be true, you'll see that it attacks while it's moving. If we drop this speed down, still attacks while moving. Look at that head movement. That is a bit weird. So you'll find that when you blend animations together that you get some weird results. If we change the blend depth maybe to one, that's done absolutely nothing. If we click that, I think we have to compile to see the changes. Set that to 300, and then attack. Yeah, that's better look. the heads. Uh, it's the mess space rotation that seems to make a lot of difference. Set that to 3, um, and then compile it again, and then set that to 300, and then tick that. Okay, that looks a little better. Maybe 3 was a bit much, but we could, again, we can come back and finesse that another time. Hit compile, uh, and what that's going to do is that is going to, uh, you know, allow us to do one attack, but now we can move while we're doing it. Yeah, we can also stand still and attack, but we can run an attack as well, which you may want in your game if it's a little bit more fast paced. We also could do like a jump and attack as well, uh, but we we're running out of time, so we'll call it a day for the video on this one. I'll see you in the next one.